Welcome back to another Supercoach video for 2019, guys. Welcome back. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for watching. I've been meaning to make this for a while, um, but I cannot wait any longer. Today, I'm going to go through my team. Now, this is probably the reason why I've delayed this video so much, because I'm always tweaking my side, and I feel like a lot of people are in the same position, but I'm quite happy with my side. I do have a couple of little spots here and there that are due for changing depending on team list Tuesday. I'm gonna get into it and I start off with quite quite a little bit of a shock. So going down from hooker naturally to the fullback position, Andrew McCulloch. I've <laughs> I've sat on this for a while now and Andrew McCulloch at 505,000. It, it is proven that the year after the, an ACL injury it's always the year after where they fully come back and uh, Andrew McCulloch has averaged 60 in the past. He averaged 55 last year so there's not that much room for too much cash gain but I think under Anthony Seabold, I think Seabold's just going to put a lot of trust in him and give him a lot of confidence. Um, depending whether a bench hooker is named on the bench will depend whether I keep Andrew McCulloch or not so if there's not a bench hooker I, I'll definitely stick with him. If there is, uh, I'll have to rethink that. And I think because my team is super set and at that price, um, I'll be sticking with Andrew McCulloch. If, if there is a bench hooker named, I think I might go Jake Friend. Um, but I can go into more depth on that in the Mike and Sub Show podcast, I guess. My bench hooker is Blake Braley. Named at number nine with no Jaden Braley on the bench in the trials. Um, I think uh, Blake Braley will get that bench hooker spot. Um, many people think it will be Kyle Flanagan, but when you think of it, there is Matt Moylan, Sean Johnson, Chad Townsend, Wade Graham in that side as playmakers. So uh, I, I think adding another playmaker into that mix probably is something they'll try and avoid and uh, Blake Braley, just someone who can get in the middle, distribute the ball the way they want to, and um, yeah, make some tackles, hopefully. Um, but yeah, he's in my side at the moment. I do have cash to upgrade him to um, Wade Egan, if, if need be. Actually, I don't. I've got 40,000 left, so I will make cash to get Wade Egan in the side. If Wade Egan is named to start with no Katoa on the bench. On to my front rollers, Marty Tapao. Under Des Hasler, I am a bit worried about him with uh, maybe restricting offloads and stuff like that. But I think uh, I saw an article. I had him before this article anyway, but um, I saw an article that he is happy at Manly under Des now. Um, I was a bit worried about his position in the club. But I think Manly's depth is not very good. And I think he will get similar minutes to what he got last year. So, um, yeah, he was super consistent last year. And Marty Tapao is just a great option. Tavita Pangai is my other main starting second roller. Last year was meant to be his breakout year. But I think with uh, players like Sam Thide and Josh Maguire out, he's only going to step up. And hopefully he does start at lock this year. I don't know where he's going to start, but you think he would increase minutes and probably get an increase on that 495,000. My bench front rollers, I won't go into too much depth on this, but Emre Gula and to uh, T Pasika from Manly. Um, this all depends on Teamless Tuesday, and Payne Haas is not there because of the news of him not being there till round four. I know this is a pretty controversial. No, it's not controversial at all, actually, but, um... Actually, no, it is. It is a controversial subject, but, um... A lot of people are starting with him, even though they know he's suspended. I believe that you should let someone else be there and make money. So you've got someone to buy later, because it always is a blessing getting a good cheapie. So you can wait the two weeks when he comes back, and then you'll have a cheapie to upgrade someone else, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure if I explained that the best, but 
I think most people will be on the same page as me. And Pasika, yeah, depending on Tingless Tuesday. Second rolls, I've stacked this. I don't really need to go into too much depth on all these, but Jake Trebojevic, Angus Crichton, and Viliama Kikau. Um, Trebojevic, just can miss it consistent, um, can go large. I know people are starting without him because he doesn't go too large and he's probably... At 667k, you could save, you could save 70k by going him to Arrow, but um, I can't go without him to be honest. Angus Crichton, um, I think he will go to another level this year, playing off Cooper Cronk. Um, the jury's still out on it. Uh, a lot of people do think that there's a lot of attacking options in the Roosters, which I do agree with, but. Um, yeah, I think his base stats are good, so I think he can only he can only get more attacking stats in this side. And Viliami Kikau, I think Penrith are going to go deep into the competition this year. Um, I am tipping them to win the competition this year. I'm not a Penrith supporter, I'm a Newcastle supporter, but because th this this isn't biased, but I had a dream that they played the Roosters in the Grand Finals and won. So. Um, Hold me to that, I guess. And my bench at the moment is Joe Stimson, Scott Sorensen, and Tane Milne. Stimson, I am not sold on. Um, I know in his 80 minute performances, he only scored 36 or something like that. Um, 36 on the average or something. Oh, I'm not too sure. Sorry, I've had a, I've had a, I've had a couple. I've had a couple. I'm all over the place, mate. He is a mid... Someone playing 80 minutes at that price, I think you can't go wrong. Like, he's going to make money regardless. Scott Sorensen. Not many people do have him. Let's see what his percentage is at. Scott Sorensen's at 3%. Real pod. I know the game he did play last year. He played, um... He played 80 minutes. He absolutely killed it. Um... I think with Wade Graham out of the side pretty early, him and Capewell will get the second row positions. It just depends on the bench. So if Blake Braley is named on the bench and there is maybe one second rower on the bench, hopefully there's two middle forwards. So Aaron Woods and uh, who's the other guy? Bakuya, maybe. No, he's no middle. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure on that. But, um, yeah, depending on Teamless Tuesday, I might change that. Might get one of my sneaky second rolls to go up for him and maybe get a uh, cheap in the center wing or something. I don't know. And Tane Milne, depending on Teamless Tuesday. Now, the halves. The halves is the one I'm really excited about. And I think a lot of people are going to be like, you're crazy. But bear with me on this one. So, my halfbacks, Adam Kieran, as expected, and Nathan Cleary. Um, I think Nathan Cleary is going to go berserk this year. The start of the last year, he averaged 70s or, or something like that. It was just that midi middle period after the injury where he really dropped. But then towards the end of the year, he came back and it was just, it was just doing it with so much ease. And I think... That start of the season and the last half of the season is all you can go off. And I really think he's a really good option this year. And if you're not going with him, let's let's see what he's at. Like, surely he's at a high percentage. 26%. That's not too bad. Um, definitely not pod territory. But it's not popular play territory. So, like... Someone like Tedesco is at 30 to 40 percent or something, so I think that's 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 pretty good. And Adam Kieran, um, if he starts for the Warriors, obviously he's straight in everyone's side. Now the five eights, the five eights. I know I've been excited about Cleary. Um, he was actually in my side after these two. These two were my first picked. Sean Johnson and Kalen Ponga. I know a lot of you are going to jump on and say, hey, why haven't you got Dylan Brown? Well, the, the reason I haven't got Dylan Brown is because 
Um, there's so many cheapies in this center wing region, and and with Scott Drinkwater, I uh, just gave away my other fullback. Scott Drinkwater is my uh, my second fullback. With Scott Drinkwater being named, I think um, you don't need all of them. You, you're gonna fill up. Your, yeah. A lot of people filling up their side with cheapies. You still need to score points to be able to get far in this competition. Um, so yeah, I've gone with this combo because I know a lot of people haven't gone with this combo. I know, if anything, people are going the Teddy Turbo combo. And, um, like, yeah, it works. Um, do I think Teddy's going to score more than Johnson? Which, which is the real question here. Um, well, maybe, maybe. But I can't start without Johnson. I really want this type of pod player, which I'll, I'll tell you what he's at. 15%. That is real good for Sean Johnson. And at a club like St. George with the structure they have and just the... Um, just out of that Warriors... Um, the Warriors culture. It, if he is... With Valentine Holmes gone, he's their attacking avenue. Um, I know most people are going to argue that M Moylan could be, but um, I think Johnson's the man, and he's going to go berserk this year, and I, it may take him a couple of rounds, but I, I, I think I just need to take the punt straight away. He he's always starts the season very well, um, I think the last two years he started with 115 two years ago from the top of my memory and he started with a 95 last year and um, he kept them top scores up in the first few games so um, I guess we'll really see where he's at towards just before Origin um, after he's played a couple of games but uh, I think I, th I just I just think I can't start without him um, if I start without him and he scores, he scores a try for, for one night, uh, yeah, I just can't do it. And Caelan Ponga, um, a lot of people are scared off him after the Indigenous All-Stars game. I think, don't worry, he was playing with a half who actually plays fullback. Well, with Jerome Hughes was a half, yeah, he plays fullback for Melbourne. Well, after Drinkwater being named, he doesn't, but, like... Uh, I think you're just going to take that game with a grain of salt. He scored 43, roughly. Probably would have got updates. Not that that... I don't know, but, um, yeah. 43, not bad. Not bad. Center wing region. John Bateman, Kurt Capewell, Zach Lomax, Corey Allen. I think Zach Lomax, Corey Allen speak for themselves. Um, I guess Corey Allen's a bit of, bit of debate. Um, whether he's actually going to play fullback or not, but that's just waiting till Tinglish Tuesday. Kurt Capewell, um, again, the shark side. Uh, John Bateman, I think at 400,000, if he gets that lock spot, he is locked into my side. Um, super coach friendly game, and I think, what's his percentage? At? It must be high. 14%. I'm actually really surprised about that, so. Um, yeah, John, especially in the center wing region, I think to start the year, you've got to have someone consistent who can score you 50. And I think you need that in your center wing region. Um, the cheapies like Zach Lomax and Stoff can um, boost your score when they score, have attacking stats. And on my bench, Jordan Kahu. Um, not sure if he's going to kick goals over Kyle Felt if Ethan Lowe goes. And not sure if Ethan Lowe stays who kicks the goals there, but I think it might be Kahu. Um, he will play fullback, but the only reason he's in my side is if he kicks goals. So maybe he's a wait and see. Um, maybe I should go him to Nickel Klockstad eventually. Uh, Morgan Harper and Albert Hopper, Albert Hopperwate. Pretty self-explanatory there. Um, I've already said my other fullback, my last position. I think you guys would already know um, if you've watched any of my videos. Uh, Tom Trebojevic, I can't start without him. I know I am scared starting with him instead of Teddy. I know their draws, their draws are pretty contrasting. Teddy has an easy draw and uh, Turbo has a pretty difficult draw, but um, 
I think I've, I've, I'm just buying him so I can lock him in, lock him in, because come the end of the season or come mid-season, you won't want to buy until after Origin anyway. And I think Tom Trebojevic will end the year with more points than Teddy. Yes, um, captaining Nathan Cleary first round. Didn't need to add that, but he's playing Parramatta. Thanks for watching. I know it's a long video, but um. Yeah, the Mike and Sav Show podcast will be back for Teamless Tuesday.